Hello, dear friend. Thomas Manton the fourth here. I'm just so uh, enamored with what God is doing in this day and hour. The Lord spoke to me uh, two things. Two things. I want to do a very short, quick broadcast. Uh, you know, in Kenya right now, in the nation of Kenya, there's a curfew going on. Everybody's supposed to be off the streets at, by 7 p.m. And I would have liked to come to you a little earlier, but I was quite busy. But I felt like to come on now and to share this. And, you know, when I come, I'm only going to tell you what thus saith the Lord. You, you know me well for that. I'm not coming because of obligation to schedule, although it's nice to have a schedule and a ritual. Because there's times we do meetings. Sundays we always do meetings. And today is Sunday. So here we are. But I'm always bringing you what thus saith the Lord. The Lord spoke to me yesterday, and he, uh, on Friday, Saturday, Friday, Saturday. Friday, the Lord said to me, he said, I want you to pray this over my people. I want you to pray, uh, my son Thomas, I want you to pray that the yokes of insecurity and fear and all of that kind of stuff that goes, all the nonsense that goes with it be broken in Jesus' name. I want you to begin to uh, uh, break the, the, the strongholds that have kept people from being the big giants that they're supposed to be. And um, right on the screen, somebody come on right on the screen, write something like, I believe, hello, hi, prophet, praise the Lord. Do some emoji, click, 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 and do share this message here. Somebody just type something right now. I want to see it. I know that you're out there. Tell me where you're, where you're watching from and all of that. And on the replay, you can also continue to keep doing that. I think uh, the social media, they're really playing with people because the feed choke seems to be on somehow from somewhere. But the Lord told me clearly, very, very clearly, well, you're number one, Mr. Evangelist Orishaba. Where are you from, man? Nice name. Banet. Orishaba. Interesting name. Where are you from? Welcome. The Lord said to me to break this. You're from hello. Okay, there you go. He's from hello. You're in Qatar. Oh, my. Bless you, son. Qatar in the Middle East. I'm praying, for, I'm praying for the nations to be broken open and broken loose. So the Lord is, uh, is wanting people to rise up in boldness. Jeanette, bless you. <laughs> I'm getting encouraged now. I saw, I saw like I started, I jumped the gun before everyone else, so, but here we are. Gladys, God bless you, dear. Nancy, God bless you. Watching the prophet from Nairobi. Ooh, that's a, that's a big statement. Tony, bless you. Oh, here they come. You're coming, you're coming. And where's some of uh, our regular members at, people at? They're coming on. I see someone that has a problem with boldness and confidence, right? Austria, bless you. Let the nations tune in, Lord. This is prophetic. Thank you, Lord. Qatar and Austria, new people. Wow. People from Kenya. Wow. Let it be a global thing. There's, something has gotten out of the box now. I don't know what's happening. They, like The cat's been let out of the bag, so to speak. I know that's a cheesy kind of analogy, but, you know, it, something that's been held up in the people is being broken, and people are going to come out into revival and full flow type of movements. It's going to happen. But I see someone that is, like, not confident, and I go, you know, their father did that to them. Their mother did. Their mother was cold. Their father was cruel. They were abused. Not maybe not abused in the way we think of the word abuse, but just neglected. It man, Kelvin. There you are. Bless you, Peter. Bless you. Welcome. Hello. And I think there's there's some marring of the subconscious mind. Some damage that was done inside. To. Damaged their progress. It was from the devil because maybe the people that in the environment that they were in didn't know they were doing that. Or maybe that had been done to them and they just carried on. 
You look at people like that are successful in the world that had good fathers. Tiger Woods had a father who from two years old was his cheerleader, was his coach, was his mentor, was his overseer, was his boss, taking him out to the golf course. And he started when he was two years old and he became the number one golfer in the world in all of history. He beat Jack Nicklaus, Arnold Palmer, all the old greats, Lee Trevino, you can think of all the, he wasn't as famous, but all these old names that you think about when you think of golf, the, the champions of, of yesteryear. Tiger Woods surpassed all of them. He was the first one to break $1 billion in income from the golf game. Kid from Hawaii. Tiger Woods, come on. And he had some problems. He hurt his back, then he had some marriage, you know, women problems and and he got messed, thrown off the lane there, and then, but he came back again. He kept at it, and then he won the championship again. It took several years, but he came back and came back again. Hello, Anthony from New York. God bless you. You're in Florida now, I know. And um, my friend from India, Pastor Blessing, bless you. Welcome. I'm talking about breaking the spirit of insecurity, a lack of confidence, something wrong with the equation in the psyche and the persona. And God wants to, I feel the anointing flowing right here, right now, receive the touch of heaven through this broadcast right now. Boldness, power, victories coming upon you from the Lord. I mean, you're going to become invincible, unstoppable. You're not going to care anymore what anybody thinks of you. You're not going to feel apprehensive when you want to pull the switch, pull the trigger. Not the trigger, but, you know what I mean, so to speak. You want to pull and open a thing and do something, you're going to feel invincible, unstoppable. Or even if you've had people that have rejected you and hated you and slandered you and lied on you and told them, uh, try to attack you and undermine you, it, it cannot stop you when you have the power of the Holy Ghost is working in you. But I tell you, the, the Lord spoke to me. When, when you have his resurrection power working in and through you, there's nothing that can be restrained from you. Nothing will be impossible to you. But you know what? This thing about in the upbringing and the environment, it has strangled the boldness out of people. Strangled that boldness out of people. That nature of the lion, that roar of the lion, that victory power, that God wants you to be able to do anything and never be stopped. Bless you from New York, from South Africa. Yes, I see you there. God bless you, my friends. Welcome in. And you can be in an environment where someone's not celebrating you. That's right, Pastor Blessing. Resurrection power from the Lord. But I'm talking about something else. I'm going to cover a few things in here, how this applies. You need to be in the right environment. You need to be with the right people at the right place at the right time, doing the right thing. And you will succeed. The Lord spoke about this year, a focus he has about being a year of success. A year of breakthrough. My God, I thought I was tired a few minutes ago, but I'm not now. Thank you, Jesus. Turn this thing on and let's go. I was supposed to do a full studio production here with the cameras and all that. I just said, I just want to just get on here and switch this thing on and go. I, we'll, we'll do that in another, another session. Too bad, but I should have the camera here set up, all the cameras and all the. But I'm just right here face to face with you. I'm delivering the word, so I'm doing it this way. For the moment. But um, God is very interested in people. Watch this now. Here's the word. Operating at their, here it is now. You get ready. Full potential. There's a woman of God that wrote me and said she's praying for me. God is raising up intercessors to pray for me. I love it. I'm not used to that all the time. I go years and years sometimes. We travel. I travel around the world. I'm everywhere. I'm doing the mission, you know, going on and on and on everywhere. And uh, I, I don't always have... Betty from the UK, God bless you, dear. Welcome via Kenya to, <laughs> Kenya to London. So, but when... And, and these teams of intercessors started praying. Karen, welcome on. And one woman of God said, Prophet, I want to see you operating in your full potential. I said, that's a really sharp and accurate Holy Ghost word. Not potential, not just doing well, and I'm praying for you. Eve, God bless you. Welcome. The Lord is 
interested in us operating at our full potential. Say amen if you believe that. Not half, not a quarter, not 60%, not 20%, definitely not 5%, but 99.999 high octane, going to 100%, full flow, full blast. I don't think anybody ever really operates all day long, every day at 100%. Because there's more in us than we know. You know, Albert Einstein, the genius, who we say is the genius of the world, of history. Jambi, God bless you. Welcome in. Share this with other people. Share this with friends. They say Albert Einstein, who was the genius, who developed his mind so well. Fred Zhao from Chuka, Kenya. God bless you, my dear friend. Servant of God. How's your church? I will want to come to Chuka again to have a meeting with you. You. And you gather all the people in the surrounding area. Let them come. We'll do it at your house. Your church. He has a big, big church. Many people there. And that's when I want to come back to Chuka. See the, what I prophesied, how it's come to pass. Regina, bless you. Come on in. So now the... The Lord is showing me something about that, that even Einstein, though he developed his, his mind so well, his brain so well, uh, he was on, they said he only, uh, he only used about 10% of his brain. So he met an Einstein who was able to figure out so many great things and do so many great things, and he was only using 10%. So I don't think it's, it's so cool to say like, well, you know, I'm at my fullest potential. I can't do anymore. Nonsense. You know, they're saying that the mind can, can do, speak 40 languages fluently. You have the, the ability to, amen, it will, Pastor Fred. Look, we, we will do it in Jesus' name. ASAP at the right time. You know, and you can, you, you can process trillions of thoughts. There's this thing that works in us that's so vast, nobody's using their full potential. Nobody. Russell, bless you. You're in Orlando, I think. I have, a good, I have a good memory. It's dangerous when you have a photographic memory, you remember too many things, not so few things. Uh, anyway, so there's this potential thing. Now, when you're in the wrong environment with the wrong people who merely tolerate you and don't celebrate you, your grace and your gift, there's no honor there. It short circuits the whole program of the great thing that God wants to do. So you need to be careful about that. Now this resurrection power, there's always more of the Holy Spirit we can receive, more power, more dunamis, more of that glory, more of the presence, the tangible presence of the Lord that can help us to do so much more. But um, you also have to have an environment and an outlet for it. Hungry people can pull on the anointing and you could see yourself like... uh, you know, you didn't even feel like you were going to do all that. And all of a sudden, God starts doing tremendous miracles. I mean, just crazy, crazy miracles through you. Uh, you know, more than you were thinking that you, you, you were going to be seeing happen. Why? Because the people needed that. Because the people needed that. So the grace came, the fire came, the glory came. And God moved even beyond you. Rita. Bless you in New York. We'll talk soon. Looking forward to talking to you and my dear brother and others. Stay safe. Stay away from people. Social distancing thing. I was getting a coffee and I'm in a place where people have an accent. Maggie, welcome. I and the lady said, social distance. You know, like she didn't know what to do. Tom Bice from the Philippines. God bless you. I saw your birthday note there. Happy birthday to you, my brother all the way in the Philippines. He's an American man in the Philippines, married a beautiful Philippine lady, and he just took a lack into the Philippines and stayed there. Isn't that great? God bless you, my friend. Write me a note. Say something. Say hallelujah. Write me. Type something. Say something. I see is watching. Talk to me. So, the Lord is uh, giving us the ability to do so much. But if we're with the wrong, in the wrong equation, in the wrong situation, it doesn't flow right. And then sometimes you can get in the right place and you don't even feel like you're so ready for it. Caroline, bless you, welcome. You can get astounded and shocked to see how, how great God can really 
begin to do something because that you were in the right environment. Do you know I had an experience, and I don't know, I think sometimes we as preachers, we, we always want to just like uh, say the best thing. Florence, welcome. We want to say the best part about ourselves or the best testimonies or the best things that we don't want to share, our down sittings and our uprisings. You know, we don't want to share, to be transparent about, you know, what happened. But I know what it's like to be in an environment and you feel like nothing. You feel nothing. You have no function there. You have no purpose there. Nobody's, you're not being celebrated there. You really have to pray again and say, why am I there? Why was I there? There probably was some reason for it. But you just have no guts, you know, guts, guts and glory. Not the physical, not the physical stuff. If you opened this up and looked inside, you'd, you'd vomit, pass out, and be unconscious. You'd need to be revived because it's just so, it's a mess, okay? But God made the whole thing to work. But you know, that's why he put skin on us so we don't have to see all that. Praise the Lord. Thank God for that, right? Can you imagine if you could see, you know, the internal organs of people, <laughs> this is bad. The internal organs of people, you know, while you're looking at them, no, God put beautiful skin on it, and he made some nice curves on the ladies, you know. By the way, I'm a real man. I don't know about some men in our generation, but I'm a real one. I'm 100% pure love, baby. I'm all male. Yeah. Praise the Lord. <laughs> I could say a lot about that. So we admire the, the God's creation in that, but thank God, you know, there's stuff on the outside to look at, and for men, a handsome man, you know, looks really great to a lady. It's supposed to look great to a lady, not to another, you know, of the same one, same type. <sighs> you feel like you, you feel like you're in a, you're in a wrong environment. You feel like you have no use there, so you get depressed. Marry the preacher. I had a quick peek at your little broadcast that you did earlier today, I think. But I think you, the camera was sideways. I wanted to, I was busy, but I want to, I'm glad you're there now. If you listen to me, just write amen, Sister Mary, evangelist, pastor lady. She was my interpreter in a great conference into Swahili from English, and you really, we really preached the house down, didn't we? Boy, that was a powerful meeting. I have the video, you can see it there. Write me hello, say something to me. I don't like these people when you just say, is watching, and you wonder if they jumped off the next second. Well, if it's a boring broadcast, you should, because I do. I'll admit that. I don't last long. Christina in Texas, God bless you. Dallas, Texas, God bless you, dear. Welcome on. Write me a note. Write me a note. Say something. Say hello. And then all of you, please hit the share button and share this with other people. Let this, let this message bless other people. And um, the power of the anointing will give you confidence give you boldness that even beyond your natural self and you'll you'll be working at a high level of potential like functionality in a fierce aggressive strong way because you're under the anointing so you need to be under God's anointing his resurrection power number one number two you need to be in the right place with the right people doing the right thing at the right time in the right way in the right environment and then things will begin to shh. Mary, are you still there? Or you got them on and jumped off? I'm going to get you. Don't make me call you. Because I will. I have your phone number. I will call you and say, look here. Go back and watch the replay and type something on there to me as I gave the instruction. Follow the voice of the Lord here. Now, one of my, one of my members in the ministry, very loyal and faithful person, uh, wrote me a testimony, and I just posted it on Facebook. I just thought I'd just put it ready for print and put a couple of pictures and make it a post on Facebook. You can read that. They were talking about dishonor, and then, you know, I wanted to say something also about honor. Dishonor is not good. When you're dishonored, it short-circuits the power of God in you. When honor comes, bless you from Norway. Bless you, dear. Lucy, hi. Oh, yeah. Glad you're here. Mary Gold, my dear friend, bless you, dear. Welcome. I'm talking about boldness, courage, confidence. We need that to accomplish the mission of God. When you feel insecure because you're in the wrong place, I'm telling you, people can, as I was saying, people can squeeze the life out of you. They squeeze your guts out, so to speak, as I was saying, not your physical. But the, your, your self-esteem. Donald Trump said something powerful. Bless you too, dear. I mean it. I'm praying for you. 
praying for everything. Donald Trump says something, says when you want, if you want to be successful at something you're going to do, you have to first believe, with the, start with the premise that you believe you're great. That greatness is, is in you and you can, you can do it and get it done. And he's been like that. Now I was talking about Tiger Woods, became the champion golfer, but he had his father who was validating him. Donald Trump also had his father who was validating him. So let's say you have, you have a lot of us, and the Lord spoke to me to teach on this tonight. We have a lot of people that are going around, they don't have that validation. You need the validation. You need the encouragement. Someone says, well, is it swelling words that's going to puff my head up? Why would you worry about that? If you have a pride problem or you think too much of yourself, God is very, has very good ways to cut you back down to size and trim the edges on you a little bit, trim the hedges and the edges and get you where... You know, in the right frame of mind that we don't think more highly of ourselves than we are. Let another man praise you, not you yourself. You know, people that have to promote themselves too much is insecurity. Now, if you're young in the ministry, young in your business, young in the way of you're doing, we can cut people some slack and just watch them and say, oh, yeah, we pray for them to get adjusted right and they can just flow it all, flow right correctly at the whole thing. But, but uh, g- give you some space and some grace to, you know, show your face and then get, uh, amen, Brother Tom. And a God. Boldness, courage, and confidence. And it lets you get your, your skill on correctly. But you know, when you really have something powerful, the aura of that, the persona of that, the power of that has us a voice of its own. You can walk into a place and change the atmosphere. You can, you can walk into the midst of something and change the whole course of what's going on there. I've had people say that of me. They said, you know, there was something going on here. And then, man of God, when you, we, a lot of people didn't know who you were. When you walked in the room, the atmosphere of the place changed. I've had people tell me that. And sometimes in the middle of a storm, when you're going through a, a lot of things, and all of a sudden someone tells you something like that, you're like, hey. Uh, but, but you need to make note of that. Pastor Wally in London, God bless you, my friend. I thought of you earlier. I think I, I saw a clip of you. You were doing a live broadcast. Say hi to me on here. Type something. Say amen or something. How's it going with you, my friend? Yeah, thank you, dear. The Lord spoke to me to do this. Environment matters. Geography matters. Assignment matters. Placement matters. Who you're with matters. Where you are matters. Your gift and your grace and your calling and a talent, your talent has a place. People are sending me money. Bless God while I'm on the air. Thank you, Jesus, for that offering, 12000 Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I'm going to read that note and respond to it. Glory. So when, when, you're, when, you, when you're in a, a place where people belittle you, and, and now it could be for many reasons. You don't have to worry about getting mad at the world about, you know, they didn't celebrate me. They overlooked me. You know, when you've had that happen, I know that everybody that's great knows that you've been in that kind of experience somewhere. You don't get mad about it. You just move. Shift gears. And thank God he shifted you. If you were in something place for a moment, God can take you and, and, and get you to the right place. That place called there where you're of extremely high value, extremely highly to be honored and favored and used and celebrated and all of that. And then, you know, people, religious people, they make too too light of this. So they want to criticize and says, well, God bless you, Frank. Where are you from, my friend? Joe Akeems, I've seen your name somewhere. Where, what country are you in? Can you write me a note and tell me where you're from? Now I see the people is watching the name and then is watching. Write me a note so I know you're really on, on board with us here. You didn't just click and flip off to something else. Uh, as I said, I'll repeat it. If it's a boring broadcast, yeah, click off. If the technicals are not right and you can't hear the sound, and so many people do that, and they're shaking the thing and all that, I don't do that. I'm on a tripod. We're mic'd in. I did the lighting correct. I had to adjust the lighting in here a little bit because it was too much glare from some of the lights. I have many lights. I've shut many of them off just to get the right thing. I had the, the logo board behind me was producing a shadow because one of the lights come that way. I set this stage here and we could have had our cameras rolling and the, like uh, for television and all that, but I just wanted to come on and 
do this right now on this Facebook Live and uh, for this one right now. My God, I should have probably put the camera on, come and think of it, but uh, cameras, but anyway, here we are. So there's a curfew in the country where I'm in right now. People really, really scared. They had to be home by six something, the six something hours. So <laughs> everybody's scattered about and they're really scared to come out. So we continue to do this online, but I'm one that will keep having meetings anyway, but sometimes you got to flow with the uh, environment a little bit and say, well, we're just going to do that. You're in Kenya, bless you. Janicella, welcome on. So um, I saw a guy years ago, let me get back to what I was trying to teach on here. I saw a guy years ago and he was so insecure. When he walked, he was tripping over his own shoes. He, the atmosphere was unnerved. It was like, and, I, and, and the Lord said to me, he's all up in the wrong environment. He's with the wrong people. This came from his family, his parents and all that. He was rejected, you know, overlooked, you know, criticized. God knows how many, what kind of words were spoken to him. And he's just in the wrong environment. Now pray for him to get set in the right place. And I did and it happened. But he was a mess. I mean, do you ever see someone that's like that? They're all nervous. They're, they're all insecure. And it's just an unnerving spirit. It throws vibrations out in the realm of the spirit. I, I have a rule. I, I, in my, some of my places, I have beautiful homes and offices. and I, I have to have my space for the grace to flow. Sean Strong, God bless you, man of God. Welcome on. I have to have the, the, the time would like my, let my hair down, so to speak. Well, I do anyway. Yeah, what's up with you too, my, my precious brother? Welcome on. And I got to have the atmosphere. I have to have that time where it just flows. I don't like being in the midst of, thank you, Tom. I don't like being in the midst of, of, of tripped up with so many people because they have so many vibes going on. And then you feel, have you ever lived in a place and everybody has, and I have too. It probably was from your family, first of all, when you were younger. And then with maybe somebody else. And you lived in a house with people. And you have to adjust yourself. You have to like, sometimes you want to think loud and shout and talk to yourself and play music or whatever. And you just have your own conversations. I do that all the time. They say two kinds of people talk to themselves. It's a joke. Get ready. Two kinds of people talk to themselves. Rich people and crazy people. Well, I'm rich, so I talk to myself. All the time I'm always having this out loud conversation. God talks to me. I'm talking to him. I'm talking to myself. I'm talking to things. I'm talking. I have to have that. But sometimes if someone's around, hello, you, you even try to think quieter than normal than when, you, when you're by yourself. Like, can you imagine you have a whole house to yourself, beautiful kitchen, beautiful rooms, living room. I'm in one of my uh, uh, office rooms here, but this is another. It's a really, if I could turn the camera, I'm not going to do it now, but I can show you the whole. It's a beautiful place I'm in here. You're just seeing one little segment of this, but the whole rest of it. My Lord. And it's all mine. I have the mountains outside, the view of the city, the skylines, or wraparound view. I'm in a very high uh, floor penthouse here. Uh, the Lord's been so good to me. Thank you, Jesus. I'm so grateful. And I look out the window and I see the mountains and I, this all mine. I, I, I remember I was in uh, this place called Savo West in Kenya. Some of you that know Kenya will know it. It's about four and a half hours from four hours from Nairobi. And uh, beautiful place with animals and mountains. And there's a, a resort there called Kilaguni. I think it's called Kilaguni. I remember it, man. Kilaguni Lodge. Yep. And they got me a room at the end on the upper floor. There's two levels. There's a lower floor and the upper floor. And I wanted to be on the... I'm in Nairobi, Kenya, in Africa, my friend. Here in my African office right now. The Lord has let me see hundreds of miles outside off the balcony. I can see it. And there's no human there because there's wild animals there. There's hyenas, there's lions, there's things that eat, eat, would eat anything, cheetahs. and It's dangerous. I mean, you can't just walk out there. So there's like a little, there's a sign and a, like a small little fence. It's not really high that can keep you from going if you wanted to walk. But it says, and everybody knows, that's the invisible perimeter. Don't go past that. Because when you go past that right there, the animals are all there and... Man, we saw the lions walking, the hyenas walking around. Hey, these are 
he's a fierce uh, man. They're, they're, you know what I mean? But the balcony was like that, and you could see and know there's no human there. For hundreds of miles, you see animals in all the expense. Do you know the feeling of that? The feeling of that? The feeling of dominion of that? That you're, uh, you're in a place where, Sabina, God bless you, welcome. Where, where you just know that this is all for your own eyes to see. Nobody can see you, and you can see everything. Do you know what that does for you? And it's another thing about dominion. God, Lucy, welcome. God wants to, everybody, if you could write me a note where you're, where you're watching from or just say something, if you don't want to put that, just say hallelujah or something, click a little hands or hearts or thumbs up or something, just so I know you're grooving with us here. Thank you for doing that. And on the replay, you can do that also. And do hit the share button. There's a share button in the lower left side of your phone. At the bottom, hit that and share that with some of your friends. They can be blessed with this message. God wants us to own property. He wants us to have our own house. And first of all, before maybe you buy a house, at least you have a rented house or a rented apartment, a nice one, new one, something beautiful, that at least you're in there and it's yours. You're paying the, the, for that, and you have your space. You have your space. Yeah, Margaret, that's right. The Serena, it's a Serena Lodge, yeah, it's beautiful. It was a wonderful place. Man, the bugs there and the, the life the life there is unbelievable. There's so much going on there. The rains were there heavily, so the, it was all green. It wasn't dry. And, uh, oof, bugs. I was sitting there eating, and there's things flying. Big, giant bugs like that would come on your table, land in your glass. Land, get, one got caught in my hair. I nearly flipped out. I just had hair like, zzz, boom. I was like... And I had to like dig in there to pull this thing out. It was a, it was like that big. <laughs> Someone's gonna get scared when you look at that. I was like, cha. New Zealand, Walter, bless you. Welcome. All over the world. Here we go. So, dominion is for you, Frank, my dear friend. God bless you. Welcome on, my friend. Dominion is for you. Dominion. Para. I want to pray over that. Father, thank you. That you said in Genesis 126 that you made us in, our, in, our, in your own image after your likeness. And that you wanted us to have dominion. Then the scripture went on to say a little bit further that in 218 that it's not good for man to be alone. He was, the, he was the ruler of the garden, but he needed help. God wants to give you proper help. He wants to give you a dream team. If you're single, he wants to give you the right spirit the right mate, the right spouse. If you're in business, you need the right partnership. You need the right help. If you're in ministry, you need to have the right people, the right team, the right framework, the right flow of people, you know? And you need to have your, your space. You need to have vehicles. I prophesy right now that anybody that doesn't have a beautiful car, a beautiful vehicle for yourself, one that you'd be comfortable in, give it to them, my Lord Jesus. Give it to them now in Jesus' name. Do you know it's not the will of God for you to live in any kind of poverty? It's not the will of God for you to live without a good vehicle. It's not the will of God for you not to live in your own beautiful house. Now again, Nyambora, God bless you. Welcome. You, you have times when God can prosper you to the point that you can pay cash for real estate and vehicles and anything you want. But before you get there, you need to at least now make an immediate goal and write it down as a, as a, as a prayer request and hold it up to God and say, Lord, I need this space. Holy Spirit, give me the grace, give me the place. I need this space, I need this place, I need it for myself. And the Lord will answer that by fire. Hello, my friend. Now, the only way you're going to get really successful, and God's called this year, 2020, the year of success. If you're watching this in 2025, it's still ap uh, apropos. It's still appropriate and still accurate and still ap applicable. So I don't like to put dates on things so much because then like, what about next year? Is it expired? No, it's a timeless thing. So if I mention the date now, uh, just make it a note that that's when we did this recording, but this will live on forever. Deborah King, God bless you. Welcome. Make it an initial thing right now as a prayer request and say, God, I need my space. 
Now someone said, well, I have my house. I, I live there myself. Or I'm there. And I have my car and I got it. Good. That's a step. That's a step. Some people don't have that. You know, anybody that doesn't have enough of that, I'm praying for you right now that God will give that to you. Now the next thing is, what about your functionality? You cannot succeed. Amen, Karen. That's right. Amen, Tom. That's right. You cannot succeed without being in the specific grace of heaven of what he's ordained for you to be doing in the right now. Can't happen. Like I said, you can't be in the wrong environment. But I remember a time I was somewhere. I want to be a little bit trans. I want to go back to this because I think someone needs to hear this. You say, prophet, you're such a powerful man. We know you from prophesying and preaching all over the world, miracle signs and wonders, the word, the authority of heaven. Yeah, but don't you ever think that God has had me walk through some things and had different experiences? I, of course, he has. And I, I was somehow, you know, it works like that. Somewhere or another, sometime or another. And I was somewhere, and I couldn't even say hello to a couple of people because my inside of myself, I was depleted of all spiritual energy because the environment I was in. I had another time I went to a church, and that, that was in one place, but another, another part of the world far away, there was some weird church, big church, but they were dishonorable toward me. And toward God, because the anointing was not there. And I thought, all these people are coming to this church for what? A lot of noise, a lot of hot air, a lot of hoopla, no presence of God, zero. Someone brought me and said, what would you think of this service? I just looked at them and went, hmm, uh, no, I didn't like it. And I told the Lord and I told them I'll never come there again. And I haven't gone there again. Uh... And they'll have events and meetings and all that, but, but the presence of the Lord wasn't, wasn't in the place at all. And I remember I left there and uh, the meeting after being in an environment like that, and I felt so bad because I went there to be blessed and touched. Someone brought me to a service when I had a little time in my schedule to go to one meeting, and it just wasn't, it, was, it didn't fit, and I felt a deep sadness because of the lack of the presence of God there. And then in another place, going back to the one thing I was talking about before, I, I didn't have like the self-esteem issue because you're around people that don't value you. Someone would say, well, man of God, I love you. Thomas, I love you. I, I value you. I know you do. But maybe you, you weren't there that day. <laughs> and you just feel like... Because the, here's the point, here's the point. Now punchline, drum roll. Here it is. It's going to rock your world right here. Here's the principle, here's, the, here's, the, here's what I'm talking about. Here's the summation of the point. You're not in a place of functionality. You're not functioning in the glory of God, in the anointing, calling, and gifting of God, the talent that he's put upon your life. There's no like movement of that ha happening somewhere. And then what that, when that's happening, that what it does is it, it strips you of all your confidence. I, I, I preach a message and uh, it's in my archives online, but I can get it again and re repost that. I will do it. I will do it. You don't have to try to find it. I'll find it and put it back but, uh, out there. But this, this word co was called, and I'm writing a book on this. Confidence, our greatest weapon, our gr or our great weapon, confidence, or our greatest weapon, one of them. But it is. Kim, welcome. Alice, welcome. Bless you. Where are you from, dear? Melewuni. That's an interesting name. You can tell me where you're from. Are you in Kenya? And what tribe is that? Melewuni. Wow. I haven't heard that name. Great name. When this combustive force of functionality is missing anywhere, it strips you of your confidence. You ever see someone that's like really aggressive and confident, even to the point that you feel a little bit annoyed of how powerful they seem? Because they have something switched on in the inside of them. So don't get mad. Try to catch that grace too. 
Try to catch that fire too. But I tell you, if you're gifted and you're not being called upon or used or flowing in what God has put in you, you'll be the man most miserable. You'll be the woman most miserable. And that's not good. So let's say God wants you to be in the business world. But you, maybe you're a Christian, you're on fire for God. But you, hi Samuel, bless you. But you, you're called into business. But you need to be doing very well in business. And, I, and I, something the Lord spoke to me, and I'm praying for this, that I, I have, there's an anointing for economic advancement and elevation that's upon my life in ministry. And I want to torch light. This is the way I saw it in a vision. I want to torch light, light a torch pew, of the fire of heaven. Australia, down under, land of Oz. God bless you, dear. Yeah, amen. Billionaires. They walk in confidence. Millionaires, they walk in confidence. That's right. That's right. You know, there's something about your personality and persona when it's operating at a high level and it's functioning well, it literally causes things to be attracted to you. You know that whole thing that they did in the world or the, they had the motivational... TV show and the book and all that called The Secret. Do you know where The Secret came from? The Secret came from confidence and enthusiasm and power and anointing from God. Like identifying yourself in like who you are and what you're supposed to be doing and walking in in power. That's The Secret. And then what that does is it causes a magnetic, this is the way they use all these terms, magnetic attraction, influence, connection, you know, attractiveness. And that's all byproducts of the glory of the creator in you to produce something. And it, that whole anointing and essence of glory and all of that, that causes you to have confidence and boldness it begins to vibrate, reverberate, fill the atmosphere, fill the room, fill the environment. And people say, wow, there's something about that person. You know, great salespeople, they, sometimes they just practice the pitch and they said it over and over again. They get so good at saying it and they feel a little uh, some enthusiasm about saying it and it can convince somebody to buy something. Someone will buy from them. But someone that doesn't know what they're talking about, they have no confidence, they have no self-image, good, they have no, they're not dressed well, they don't have a good presentation. There's a lot of few points I just gave you there. Presentation, packaging is important. Excellence is important. Honor is important. Confidence is important. You know, and they don't have, they don't know what they're talking about. They're not organized. They don't look good. They don't smell good. They don't talk good, they don't present it well, well, they need to keep working on themselves to get it. But when God touches you, like he's touched me, and, you, and the presence of God begins to flow and come out from you, oh my, it's just miraculous what begins to, the results that begin to happen. So the Lord wanted me to come on and share this. I want to just, want, want to release that brief word. I also, I wanted to maybe read this, but I don't want to take time to do that right now. But let me give you some key scriptures about in light of what's going on right now. Isaiah 54, 17, no weapon formed against us shall prosper. Hi, Brad, in Belfast, Ireland. God bless you, my friend. Psalm 91, 1 to 16, you can read those verses aloud. Psalm 23, I'm there right now. Someone's writing me, when are you in NRB? I'm there right now. <sighs> they're writing me on Messenger. I hope they're watching the live. Now, wouldn't that be funny if someone's writing me a messenger note, but they don't know that I'm on live? Well, I'll send this link to them that they can watch it, if not. Amen. Share this with your friends. I've covered some powerful things. I want to pray this protection over you. Psalm 23, Psalm 91, Isaiah 54, 17, Isaiah 43, 2, that says like you, you know, the wind and the fire and the rain or the, the pestilence, like... Jesus even said in Matthew 24, you'll see even pestilence, but the end is not yet. You know why? Because your gift is going to make room for you. The glory of God that's on you and in you and what, that God wants to move and, and produce things through you, it's not finished yet. 
So are we close to the end? Yeah, we're closer than we were <laughs> even recently. Who would have thought that in a short time the freedoms of walking freely could just be like yanked away? So I, I, I like to laugh at this because I say, you know, if anybody wondered if there was going to be an end times, a real end time like the Bible predicts this horrible thing that will happen. Well, you can see now that it's possible for it to happen pretty quick when the season comes for it. But let me encourage everybody. The end is not yet. And I wrote another little post today. Somebody wrote me a message about a uh, and I didn't want to listen to the video. So people send me a lot of stuff said, what do you think? They, all, every day I get stuff like that. And one that I heard him, the same guy uh, from India, was giving all these predictions, you know, about horrible things coming. And I tried to click through one video that he had before. And I was like, no, 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 that's too negative. That's too much. We don't need to focus on that. Will it happen at some point in the end? Yeah. Paulette, God bless you. Welcome on. Will it happen at some point? Yep. Should we focus on it now? Nope. Focus on having a good life. Focus on being productive in what God's given you to do. Occupy until he comes. Focus on making money. Focus on being successful in business. Focus on expanding your voice if you're in the ministry. Let God amplify your voice. Focus on getting the right things going in the right environment that you can be productive, that you can be happy. What I'm talking about here, confident. And I'm going to pray that that... The Lord spoke one other thing to me. He said two things. Number one, I want you to talk about this. The power of confidence, boldness, and courage. The environment, the placement, the whole thing. Everything to be put in place. But the Lord spoke to me too. He, says, I, he said, son, this is the second thing now, and I'm going to wrap this. I want you to pray and prophesy over my people that this yoke, these yokes of bondage, of insecurity, low self-image, bad self-esteem, uh, lack of celebration, lack of being in the right place at the right time with the right people doing the right thing for the right reason, for the glory of God. I said that fast, but we can probably write lines on each one of those and make a newsletter out of this. So the Lord wants you to be free. I pray that the fire of the anointing comes on people, that they, they get confident, not too confident, not cocky and arrogant, not too uppity, you know, still being humble and knowing your right protocols and flow of things. But, but inside of yourself, you don't feel fearful. You don't feel insecure. You don't feel unwanted. You don't feel rejected, no matter what environment you came from. I was in a meeting some years ago, and, and the Lord spoke to me to release that fire at the end. And people literally fell down, and it wasn't that kind of meeting, you know, it wasn't that kind of thing that, that would just happen all the time. Crash the chairs down, fall down, break the chairs, fall over. Some people had to be carried out because the anointing felt so strong, the glory fell. I didn't lay hands on anyone. I was on the platform. There was like a thousand people there, and they all were falling down, screaming. Demons were coming out of people. It was, it was amazing. And, and, and uh, unfortunately, that film was... Uh, uh, misplaced or lost along the way. I wish I had it now. I could just uh, cue that up and play it again, but we'll do it again, that kind of thing. But the, what I said was that the best part of you is going to come out and whatever the devil's done to you, kept you in bondage, kept you messed up, that thing is going to be broken and destroyed. And when I spoke it and said, release it now, Lord, the power of God descended, the glory cloud went over the whole place. People began to scream, fall down and get delivered. Well, that same fire right now, I feel it again, and I want to prophesy that it's going to come right through this screen right now and touch you right now, that every ounce of insecurity, fear, timidity, every kind of abuse that you've had, rejection you've had, coldness shown toward you, attacks to undermine your success, uh, theft and things, people that abuse you and spoke badly to you and did bad things to you and that ways that you weren't celebrated, you were just tolerated or overlooked or even abused and damaged. All of that is going to be broken right now in Jesus' name. Let's pray. Father, thank you for the touch of heaven being released right now, being released right now. 
Boy, in church, we should have a keyboard player to play right now and everybody lift their hands. Let's sing a few songs. We're going to do that, but this is encapsulated right here in this little broadcast. But we, uh, the same power of God that can flow in a big meeting like that, like we have, uh, can, can flow right here through this, through this thing right here, through this medium of communication right here. The power of God be upon you right now, my friend. Touch, Lord, them with your fire right now. Release them from everything that makes them operate on a lower level than their full potential. I pray that you'll bless your people and our people, our partners. You want to be a partner with me because that's the way the blessing begins to flow. And that God would give you cars, houses, things, environment, that's beautiful, that you can enjoy yourself and really feel good about life. The Lord is good like that. He wants to do that for you. But Father, we curse this yoke of insecurity, fear, and timidity. Let it be broken off your people right now in Jesus' name. Never to be seen again. And from today, the anointing is falling where, on you where you are. And you're going to begin to dream. You're going to begin to feel confident. You're going to begin to feel bold. You're going to begin to see, in, like, sometimes I'll see myself doing something. I see it in, like, a video form. Todd Williams, bless you. Replay this. Share this with friends. Go back and watch this. I'm about to wrap this. But I've shared some very powerful things. You need to hear it. Others need to hear this. Other leaders need to hear this. Preachers need to hear this. Business people need to hear this. This is a powerful word from the Lord here on this great Sunday. And I'm coming to you live from Africa, from my African office here. And the Lord bless you. God wants you to operate at your full potential. And he's going to make the provision and the way and the situations and the connections and everything that's necessary for you to have and use and the things to facilitate you, facilitate your grace that you could become more. And that is the word of the Lord. From today, it begins. Watch the signs. And I want you to write me the testimonies. I see people, I'm telling you, I see people being given cars and houses, open doors, money, business deals that you can pay cash for anything you want. They're coming. Do you believe, do you believe I'm God's prophet? I know you do. They're coming. They are coming. They are coming quickly. They're coming even now, even in a twinkling of an eye. They're coming. Because God... Hey, Dennis, man of God, bless you. Dennis Wilson, bless you, my friend. Yes. Look forward to talking with you. Let's connect. I'm in Africa right now, in my African office here. And I'm so glad to be here. The Lord is moving here. And he's doing great things for me. You know, I believe if you want to be blessed, you should listen to a blessed man. And I certainly am one. God is doing things for me. I haven't been poor or broke in a long time. And I don't ever plan to be again, by the way. Bishop Adrian, bless you. Where are you, where are you watching from, Adrian? Where are you? Can you write me a note and tell me where you're at? I'd like to pray for you and talk to you more. David, hello, my friend. I saw your broadcast. I like the, I saw that I had, you had a few clips of it. Was it in Nixa, a place called Nixa? Is that where it was? You could write me and tell me. I think I got it right. I wrote a comment. And there was uh, a song that some lady sang there in the meeting. Really good. In fact, I saved the link for that because I want to play the song back. Don't know how what was happening in the meeting. Believe the word of the prophet. You shall no, believe the Lord your God and you'll be established. Believe the word of the prophet and you shall prosper. Expanded verse. Sabina, you got it though. You got it. There's Second Chronicles 20, 20, but there's an A and B to the verse. Someone could type that on the screen for me. Sabina, look that one up. Second Chronicles 20, 20. Can I write a note to myself? Well, I just hit the invite button. Let me not play with this thing right now. <laughs> oh, here's the thing. It says like a pen. Oh, here's a comment. Oh, description. No, I didn't want to do that. I'll do that after I'm done. I better not play with this right now. Write that on there. Second Chronicles 2020. Come on, somebody do that for me right now. Two space Chronicles 20 colon 
20. There's A and B. Believe in the Lord your God, and you shall be established. Then believe in his prophet, and you shall prosper. Believe the words of the Lord through his prophet and you will prosper. Hello, James. God bless you, my friend. You're in Nairobi, yes? Isaiah 48, 17 is another favorite verse of mine. Isaiah 48, 17. Someone please write that on the screen. I'm not seeing you do it. Where are you people at? Come on, wake up. Isaiah 52, awake, awake, O Zion, out of slumber and sleep. You're sleeping on me now. I need some help here. Put the whole scripture... Yeah, good, thank you. Put the whole scripture. Let's, let's see it. Copy and paste. Open your Holy Bible software, copy, then paste it into your WhatsApp, whatever, then you copy over. That's what I do. Or maybe it's a more direct way. But Second part of the verse especially. Believe his prophet, so shall you prosper. Third John 2 says, Beloved, I desire that you prosper above everything else. And be in good health, even as your soul prospers. Now, Isaiah 48, 17, that's 3 John 2. Another one, Isaiah 48, 17. I am the Lord your God who will teach you how to profit and lead you in the way that you should go. I'll teach you to profit. Now, of course, when you want to profit, P-R-O-F-I-T, you need to be under the right profit, P-R-O-P-H-E-T. Thank you, dear. Oh, I love you, Mary. Thank you, Mary Gold. Thank you. Oh, there it is. Isaiah 42, I don't know what's in there. I will read it, David. Give me Isaiah 48, 17, somebody. Now you know we're having church because we're opening the scriptures. Yeah, that's me. I was on a broadcast with a friend and everything he was saying, I was putting the scripture references for where I could think of a particular thought that was appropriate to what he was saying prophetically. And uh, I didn't see a lot of amens about it, but I know I'm doing the right thing. I didn't see anybody else do that, but nobody else did that. They were all writing their comments, amen, hallelujah, say, or saying what they want to say. But I was putting the scriptures. Talk about the blessing I put, Proverbs 10.22. That's a good one. Proverbs 10.22 says, the blessing of the Lord will make you rich and add no trouble to you, to you with it. You'll have no trouble over it. The blessing of the Lord will make you rich. Proverbs 13.22, the wealth of the wicked is later for the righteous, for you and for me. Deuteronomy 8.18, I give you power to create wealth, to generate, to make, to manage, and multiply money. To make, to manage, and multiply money. To make, to make it, manage it, and multiply it. Rosemary Wachera, God bless you, dear. Welcome on. Oh, yeah, we'll read that one. You wrote 42.17. Well, maybe it's a good one. Maybe it's one. Of, I hope it's not one of those that says, when Isaiah said, oh, thou sorcerers, you'll die. <laughs> Let it not be one of those. All right. We'll read it later, though. 42.17. They'll be turned back. Woo! Those that serve the other things. Yeah. I knew it was one of those bad ones. How did I know? I'm the prophet. I know the word. Let's do, uh, there we go. Let's do Isaiah 48.17. Let's try that. Isaiah 48, 17, that's a good one. I am the Lord your God who teach you how to profit through the prophet and I'll lead you in the way you should go. Oh yeah. Psalm 35, 27, yes, James, that's a good one. He said, I'll take pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. Those that say, Praise the name of the Lord. Let the name of the Lord be magnified. He said he'll take pleasure. Kenneth Jones from New York. I think I know. Is that you? Proverbs 10.22. Yeah. The blessing of the Lord brings wealth. That's another translation. Without painful toil for it. My God, I know that's right. That's a good translation. Oh, that's NIV. That's a different trend. But that really brings it out in a different way, doesn't it? The blessing of the Lord brings wealth without painful toil for it. Ooh, Lord. Mary goes, here we go. Thus saith the Lord, King James, formal, King Jimmy, 1611. Thus saith the Lord, thy redeemer, thy, here we go. 
Thy, thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, I am the Lord thy God, which teacheth thee to profit, which leadeth thee by the way that thou shouldest go. Isn't that King James funny language? Whithersoever thou goest. Muthoni Gachanja. Hello, my friend. Bless you, dear. Um, we're having fun here. We're sharing a lot of scriptures. I'm about to wrap this up in a minute or two and uh, replay this, share this with other people. I've shared some very powerful things. People need to have boldness, confidence, and courage. That, that's the word today. But boldness, well, part of it, some, one, one of the words. And you need to be in the right place at the right time with the right people doing the right thing for the right reason in the right way under the hand of God. I said that fast. You need to be in the right place at the right time with the right people in the right environment, the right geographical place, well, as I am here doing my assignment in Africa. And the Lord is it's just so wonderful. You need to be in the right place at the right time with the right people doing the right thing in the right way for the glory of God. And things will begin to happen well. You can't be in a starchy, religious, dead environment. You can't be in a, a, an environment with people that overlook you. And I'm praying right now that there's a shift going on. I'm speaking this prophetically by the Holy Ghost. There's a shift going on for people. You're, you're not going to begin to uh, uh, just wake up, but you're going to literally, as you wake up and walk, you're going to begin to see the manifestations of new things, new open doors, new things happening that are going to come forth in Jesus' name. It's going to happen in Jesus' name. Father, thank you. I feel such an anointing here. Father, thank you for the grace. Directs you in the way you should go. I like the NIV too. I also like the New King James because it's like the, the same translation, but without the whithersoever thou goest and these thou fours and thighs and shouldest and wouldest and couldest. Couldest not, shouldest not, wouldest not. We don't speak that way. Do you say, oh yeah, my dear, it, thy plans are great, and whithersoever thou goest, thou shouldest be blessed. Do you say, do you talk like that to people? Okay, anyway, only in church, or reading King James. Hallelujah. Someone's doing a lot of check marks. I like you. Give me some hearts. Go to the red one next to it. Someone blow some hearts up on the screen. Let's heart it up. This is what the Lord says, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. I'm the Lord your God that teaches you uh, in teaches you what's best for you. Well, of course, that's that's true too. And directs you in the way you should go. What's best for you, what is best for you is profit. You don't want to be in business and be in the liability or in the negative. You want to be in the positive. Father, thank you for this touch of fire. As I'm speaking, there's an impartation of courage and boldness. It's being released. As I'm speaking here, as you replay this and play this again, something's going to shift for you. Something is going to begin to happen. And as God wakes you up, thank you for the hearts, love it. As you begin to wake up and walk now into the next phase of things in your life, your destiny, your calling, what God, what God has for you to be doing. You're going to see the manifestations of new people, new friends, new connections, new favor, new money, new resources, new vehicles if you need, new house if you need, new furniture you need. I just got this beautiful uh, recliner sofa set. I'm so excited. Uh, you know, you could sit on the wrong furniture and your back get all messed up. Your muscles start to twist sideways. You... you you need to go to the spa to get worked on. You need to go to a chiropractor. You need to go, you know, you need to get, it's terrible because of junky stuff. God doesn't want you to have any junky furniture in your house. He doesn't want you to have any old stuff. He wants you to have the new, the best one. I saw one that was really expensive. I thought, well, we can trade this other one for that. But the one I got was good. And the Lord just worked it out that, I, that I'd have it. Beautiful. But there's better stuff. The best stuff is what he wants you to have. Why? So you can be comfortable. All the equipment. Here's another thing I want to prophesy. All the equipment you need, the office space you need, the furniture you need for that, the decor, the lighting, super elegant, the, the, the people to work well, the administration to flow well, all the things in, the, in brilliant excellence. God has that for you and for me. And we claim it and receive it in Jesus' name. For what? 
For what purpose, you say? So that we can be productive. So that we can glorify the Lord and glorify the Master and get His work done. You know, elegant things glorify God. I'll say it without apology. Elegant things, prosperous things, flourishing things. I, I made one apostle mad in America. I was preaching at his church and I, I really went over into this thing. I, taught, I was talking about opulence. He didn't like the word opulent. He thought that was worldly, sinful, lustful, materialistic. I thought, dude, uh, it was bad. He gave me a talking to about that, but I, I smiled at him and nodded my head because I was a guest speaker in his church, in his conference, but I, I didn't receive it. And no, opulent is good. Opulent, opal, jewelry, you know, beautiful stones and gems. You, you think God's scared of that? His street is made of gold. The, di- the doorknobs in Moses' house and Abraham's house are probably made out of solid diamonds. And all these jasper and onyx and crystal light. Come on, read Revelation there. All the beautiful gemstones, rubies and sapphires and emeralds and diamonds and gold. and oh, God made all this. The earth is full of them, by the way. Now, most times they get into the wrong hands. Look at the color of this. It's pretty cool, this little pattern here. Somebody decided to make it like that. Thank God it wasn't just a plain color. I don't know about this, this fuchsia color here. I'm not really, I would have left that out and put some up. I like this one. Look at that. I mean, it's just, it's designed. Look at these lions standing up like they're, they're lions. I know they might look like creatures, but they're lions standing up, holding the shield of dominion in my name on the top and with swords coming down and through. Someone made that logo for us. It speaks of dominion. It speaks of power. It speaks of authority. It speaks of glory. And God wants us to have that more and more. I want to tell you something. You're going to see me sitting on the greatest studio set soon. We're, we're setting that up and arranging that. It's going to be just phenomenal. I'm so thrilled about it. But I, I tell you, I feel the anointing of God to break you loose from everything that has held you back. I prophesy three things to you. You're, you're going to step up into greater potential. You're going to begin to flourish. And you're going to begin to have favor with many people. You're going to step up in the higher realm of your potential of what you could be doing and should be doing. And you're going to get more uh, skilled, more prosperous, and you're going to have more favor with the right people. That's going to begin with immediate effect from today. Watch even the little things. The people just are good to you, kind to you. The atmosphere shifts. Why? Because when something shifts in you, as I'm prophesying over you right now, when things shift in you, then things shift in the outer sense. I, I like this statement. I've been preaching this for years. I just thought of it again right now. You don't, here, here it is. You don't always get in life what you want. You really think this through, you'll, you'll know I'm saying, it, I'm, saying it, I'm saying it correctly. You don't always get in life what you want, but you always get in life what you are. You don't always get in life what you want. You can keep praying over things you want, but you always get in life what you are. In other words, the level of your development, you like water seeks its own level. But you need to get to the point where the river's flowing so much that it begins to overflow the banks and begins to flood the earth like his glory coming through you on that level. Are you seeing this? Father, I thank you for the touch of heaven, for atmosphere, environment, confidence, boldness, strength, all of the accoutrements of what's needed in the natural world, material, the material things, the, and also the, the placement, the places, the things, the furnitures, the, how, the equipments, the people, the, the operations to begin to come out and flow, but that people have that environment, that, that place with you. I love this uh, Psalm 91. I want to give you that as a homework assignment. I, I would have liked to read through it, but I, I, for time's sake. The, 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 read that out aloud yourself. But the first verse says, when you're in the secret place of the Most High and under the shadow of the Almighty, then you have great authority. And this disease will not come near you. I prophesy it's not going to come near you. It's not going to touch you. You're not going to be one of the ones that get it. You're not going to get it. Do your stuff. Keep your social distance. Distance. I went to get a cappuccino in the shop and this beautiful young lady 
she was she was with one of her friends. They walked in and they looked all nervous and like social distance. Like that she did. She said it with an accent. I really left. I looked at her. I was like, that, that's funny. So I kind of jumped a couple of steps over it. Thought, well, in case we need to be this far away from each other. <laughs> Woo! I was like, this is a crazy world we're living. Well, what's going on right now? Social distance. And uh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Parashakati. <sighs> So do that, you know, take care, use your hand sanitizer, wash your hands. Don't touch your face when you touch something. You, you stick your hand in your pocket, use a fabric to open doors. Don't touch hard surfaces, I want to tell you. They say that this, uh, this ugly thing could get on those things and stay there, on metal, door handles, stuff like that. You know, I had a, another apostle friend that's like this dude. Donald Trump was also like that. Well, he's the president, he has to shake everyone's hand, but he wasn't a handshaker before that. Didn't really like doing it. Really conscious of germs. People just want to go wash their hands anytime someone touches them. It's a good habit because you you get less the those contagious things. But 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 um, you you could use something like don't touch things you don't need to touch. Don't be in the wrong place at the wrong at the wrong time. You can you can avoid that. But in the spirit, know that we are covered. That that evil stuff is not coming near to us because of Psalm 91. We're covered by the glory. We can't get sick. We will not have it. And we will only have, we can't have poverty, we can't have lack, we can't have problems. We can only have success. And that is my word to you. Thomas Manton IV, from the boss, the Lord Jesus himself, coming through his prophet here, telling you we can only have success. And third John, the Apostle John said, I want you to prosper, I want you to be in good health, and I want your soul to prosper, to flourish, and create so many great things. And this is the word of the Lord. God's given you boldness, courage, and power, health, wealth, covering, and protection. In Jesus' name, thank you for being my partner. I'm praying for you. I've been getting messages, people are sending uh, uh, Donations as we've been on the broadcast here. Thank you. Let them keep coming. Uh, I wish someone could type on my things. Cash app uh, dot me forward sign dollar, dollar sign dr Thomas Manton. PayPal dot me forward sign Thomas Manton just by itself. The website www.thomasmanton.com. Can someone throw those up on the screen for me? Uh, ways that you can donate. M Pesa 07 in Kenya 0792. 320-780. Oh, you can make donations that way. PayPal is great. Cash App is great. The website directly is great. And Pesa is great. Those are four ways that you can sow into this ministry. Tie, excuse me, ties, offerings, donations, and things for the missions that we're doing things all around the world. Father, thank you for the grace of heaven. Let your presence come through this medium of broadcasting here. And touch my friend and make their life totally different in a great way from today, in Jesus' name. I'm Thomas Matthew the Fourth. I'm praying for you. Love you much. Talk to you on the next broadcast here. In Jesus' name, love you. I love you, I love you, I love you. Thank you for being my partner and friend. Share this. Replay it. You'll be blessed more and more, in Jesus' name. Amen.